Hello everyone, Nancy here with A Joyful Cottage. If you, like me, have popcorn ceilings in your home, maybe you've thought about removing the popcorn, doing something different with the ceilings, or maybe you've thought about painting them. For me, I thought painting would be a good option in my bathroom, which I've been working on for some time, as you know, if you've been following me. And so I looked into some ideas on how to do that. There are options, you can spray paint, them, you can roll them with a roller, and I chose to do a roller process. So I'm going to show you what I did. I've got a video here that I will show you the process, and then afterwards I'll talk a little bit about what I would do differently if I was to do it over again. I hope you'll be inspired by this video. I hope it'll give you some ideas. I hope it will be helpful to you if you've got popcorn ceilings and you're thinking about what to do with them. So without further delay, let's get started. These are the materials that I used for this project and I'll leave more details in the description box below. Before I start to paint, I'm going to just sweep the ceiling with a broom to remove any dust or debris that might have accumulated there. I'm taping off the fan with blue frog tape. I won't be taping the area around the trim because I will be painting the trim after I paint the walls. So I don't feel it's really necessary to tape off that area. Now that the taping is finished, I can start painting. Here I'm cutting in with a one and a half inch angled brush. I had planned to use my two and a quarter inch angled shortcut brush, but it was too wide for getting around the popcorn. So I switched to this narrower brush. I found that dabbing the paint on worked better than trying to brush it on. I also found that I needed to heavily load the brush with paint to get proper coverage. Just with this one coat around the fan, I could see the difference painting the ceiling would make. One of the challenges of using a roller to paint the popcorn is to get enough product on the roller to put down a decent coat and not wet down the popcorn too much. So it's kind of a balancing act. You can't just roll the paint on quickly going back and forth with your roller as you would with a smooth ceiling or wall. If you do, the popcorn will begin to pull off and you'll have a big mess. About halfway through the rolling, I switched from a roller pan to a pail, painting screen, and roller pole. I thought it might be an easier process, not having to get up and down a ladder. I did find I had better control with this method. I found there's a benefit to standing on the floor and being able to apply steady pressure to get the coverage I wanted. And of course, not having to go up and down a ladder saved time. The fan looked dingy next to the freshly painted ceiling. I decided to spray paint it. Taking the entire unit down and reinstalling it wasn't going to be an easy task. So I decided to try spray painting it in place. I opened the window, donned a paint mask and goggles, and it only took a couple of light coats. I did a lot of touch-ups with a brush to get full coverage on this ceiling. This was a very tedious project, but I'm really happy with the way the ceiling looks now. It's clean and bright. It looks fresh. Okay, so lessons learned in this project. Would I paint my ceiling again? Yes. Would I do a roller method? No. I would spray paint it. I didn't want to do a spray paint method this time around because I didn't want to rent a spray gun. I don't own one. I'm also not going to spray paint all the ceilings in this home because they are tall and I don't want to have to get up on a ladder and try to do that. I would have someone come in and do it. I would have a pro come in and spray paint the ceilings for me if I was going to go ahead and do the rest of the house. So that is something that you have to think about. Do you want to spray paint your popcorn ceilings or do you just want to remove them and do something different? 
There are lots of options. Some of them are fairly expensive. Also having the popcorn removed can be expensive unless you do it yourself and it's pretty messy. So I wasn't ready to tackle that project and so I decided to paint the, the ceiling in my guest bath. Another option I want to add here is that you can cover your popcorn ceilings with beadboard or paneling or some other material. And I would definitely think about doing that if I wanted to spend the money. I'm not sure how much all that would cost. I don't think it's a, a really cheap way to go, but I think it would look great. So those are just some thoughts and options. So I use Sherwin-Williams paint. My hu late husband was a painting contractor and he always used Sherwin-Williams. And I've always had good luck with them and as well as Benjamin Moore. So I used Sherwin-Williams and I thought it was kind of expensive. It was $40 for um, a gallon of paint, which I thought would cover the entire ceiling, but it didn't. I ran out of paint and it doesn't come in smaller units. So I went to Lowe's and they have um, signature, that was part of signature brand that they sell. And it's uh, about $20 for this. So I don't know, was that, Expensive? Probably not when you consider how much a quart of paint costs. So I would probably use a, a less expensive brand to begin with for a ceiling. Again, lessons learned. I've never done the popcorn ceiling before and I had a lot of things I had to learn through this. I had looked at various YouTubers that painted popcorn ceilings and they were professionals. And uh, there were people that used rollers and one suggested what it's like a, a roller that has slits in it that you can use to paint popcorn ceilings. I heard mixed reviews on that and I wasn't able to get one easily so I didn't go that route. I just used a half inch roller pad which is what was recommended to me. So it took a long time. It took several coats to get the coverage I needed and then I still had to go back and touch up. So it was a very tedious project. It was uh, time consuming and I would definitely not do it the same way again. Again, like I said, I'd either rent a spray or buy a spray, spray gun uh, or, or have it done professionally. So just some thoughts that I have about that. I am happy that I did it. It was a small room, so, you know, as projects go, it probably didn't take as long as I would if I did the whole house, but definitely took enough time that I'm not eager to do it again. <laughs> so I will leave you with that, and you can make of it what you will if you decide to paint your popcorn ceilings. I think it's a, it's a good option. It certainly looks a lot cleaner and brighter, and I'm happy I did it. I used the bright white in Sherwin-Williams and this was ultra white in Valspar. So it was a good match. It matched perfectly. I'd taken the leftover paint from Sherwin-Williams into Lowe's and the guy there looked at it, did the color match in the computer and it, and it was perfect. So I didn't have to do anything different with that. So that's, that's the scoop on painting your popcorn ceiling. That was my experience. If you've had your own experiences, feel free to share them in the comments. I'm sure you would help somebody else. I hope that my experience has helped you. So with that, I'm going to sign off on the video. If you want to stick around for a minute, I'm going to talk a little bit about Stephanie over at Little Blessed Nest who lost her husband. And I want to share some scripture about that. So thank you so much for watching. I know that some of you who watch my channel also watch Stephanie's channel at Little Blessed Nest. Recently, her husband passed away suddenly, and that got me to thinking about so many that come here that have lost spouses, loved ones, and I wanted to encourage you from scripture today. And I'm going to read from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning with verse 13. But we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. 
For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. And that's what we want to do is encourage one another. If you would like to take some time to go to Stephanie's channel, if you haven't yet done that, and leave her a word of encouragement, a comment, I know that she would appreciate it and it would encourage her as she's grieving during this time. Her husband, Timmy, was such a lovely man and we know where he is. She made that very clear in her video that he's with the Lord, but she's still going to be going through the grief process and she's gonna need our prayers and our encouragement. So thank you so much for being with me today, for allowing me to share scripture with you and for your kindness I know that God will bless you as you have blessed me, and I'll see you again soon.